Hello, this is Amnesia. This is lesson 14. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a lever open a certain door. So, let's start by first showing you how I concealed this one. Basically, a painting that ends in DYN or dynamic is a painting that can be moved. So, I'm just going to show you quickly what I mean. So this is what I mean. This one and this one will be able to move and a couple other ones like this one and this one. And I think there's one more that can be moved. Maybe not. Okay so to make it not fall off the wall I'm just using this one randomly. I can show you the I can show you that how it works. Basically if it's movable, this one's not movable. But I'm just using it for now. The trick to getting it stuck on the wall if it's movable, because if it's movable it's gonna fall. So the trick of that is to make sure that there's enough space for it. And then just move it really close to the wall so that it just touches the wall. And the painting's not concealed in the wall. Like that. And that's how it won't be, it won't fall when you start the map. So I've already done that with this. And I've already made a lever right over here. I called it open exit door. Now there's two ways of doing this. One is putting it right here and then you won't have to program the part that I'll show you later on. Or I'm going to show you the actual way, the way that I use usually. So I'm just going to program it quickly. In here we're going to go and look for add local, set local bar in. So let's quickly look for it. This is to set a variable to check if the levers have all been pulled. Because I'm going to show you how it works if you put more than one. If you're not going to have more than one, you can just have, you can just delete this part, you don't need it. But it's always good to know. So we're going to call this variable one. Then we're going to go to Sorry about that, I just got a call. So we take set entity connection state and then we copy it and put it in our scripting. Now this is going to be the name of our lever. So I used open exit door for obvious reasons. The callback is, well, basically whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to quickly call it func1, as in function. And we're going to go out of here. And as soon as a person uses lever, func1 is called. So we have to set it to something. So inside those no more brackets. We're going to write string and in lever name this is in case you want to I'm going to show you how it works. You can really shorten this thing. If you have more than one you don't have to make more of these. You can but you can always do it the other way. It depends on what you're trying to get. Then we're going to make an integer. This one's going to be the state. So I'm just going to call it L state. 
we're not going to change the normal value of it, normal name of it. Then, in here, we're going to check for the else state, and we want it to work if we pull it downwards. So downwards is one, upwards is negative one, and zero is not touched at all when it's in the middle. So if the else state equals to one in our case. Inside there we're gonna set or add the local variant. Then we're gonna give it the name that it is, it's bar one. And we're gonna add it by one when it's full down. We can add it by two, by three, by four, by five, anything you want. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it's there. Then we're gonna call another function to check because once this is plus by one we have, we want to check what happens so usually if you want to have a trick where they have to set it downwards and the other level upwards you can have a negative one if l state equals to zero negative one something happens then or it's minus by a certain amount Minusing by a certain amount is just a negative. Adding by a negative is a negative, so it makes sense to have that. So void func2, that's going to be called as soon as this condition happens. In here we're going to check if the get local variant which is bar 1 and we're going to check if it's equal to 1 I'm going to quickly show you how it works if you put more than 1 but first I'm going to finish this for those of you who don't want to know yet or are not seeing it yet so in here we're going to write our function whatever function you want Again, that's a comment that makes sure that the program doesn't read it. It's just for the programmer to know what's going on. Then I'm going to quickly show you how it works if you've got more than one level. So, we're going to have a for loop. For int i. Whenever you don't know what, whenever you don't know what to call in a string or an integer, you usually call it i. but that's supposed to be a last resort you're not supposed to call everything i because you can't use i twice unless it's in a for loop when it's in a for loop it's being used and as soon as you go out of the for loop it doesn't exist anymore so we're going to start from one because we're going to do human counting i is less than or equal to three or four or five or however many levers you have. So let's just say two. And then we have this part. And that's it. But what we have to do over here is we have to call the other lever open exit door two. And this one has to be open exit door one. But since which is going to work like this. Basically, your first lever is going to be open exit door 1, second lever is going to be open exit door 2, third one is going to be open exit door 3, and so on and so on. So that's what you have to call them in the game to do this. But, and then if you do this, you also have to change one more thing. Inside here, you want to check 
the name. These pop-up messages appear every time I lower the resolution, so I guess you just have to deal with them. Okay, so over here we're going to write an if statement. Say if lever name set lever name, but this is not as accurate to do. It's just um, it's if you want them all to be upwards or all downwards. But if you want one to be upwards, one to be downwards, it's better to just do it split to make sure that it's not as confusing or it's just more simple to do. So let's get to the function part of it. We're going to close the door. So we're going to set swing door closed. You can put other things in here, it doesn't really matter. So let's just set the swing door closed. The swing door that I want to be closed was castle underscore one. I wanted this to be true. It has to be closed and this to be true. That's how you put it there. So now that we've done that, it will work. So let's try it. Okay, so I forgot to delete this part, this plus i over there. So I'll just go back to it. Okay, so now it should work. And then it closes. If you want it to have a more dramatic effect, you can use the voice to close it. Otherwise, that's the end of my tutorial. See you in my next tutorial. And bye.